In this video, I want to give just some practical hands-on instruction to talk about how you graph hyperbolas in a, in a real sense if you are actually given an equation of a hyperbola. So we're going to explain this with this particular form of a hyperbola. Remember, you could have a similar form if it started y minus k squared over a squared and the x minus h came second, but um, this works in either scenario. Uh, so I'm just going to explain it with, with this model because the, the ideas are, are interchangeable depending on uh, which form you start with. Okay, so here, here's our list of, of hands-on steps. The first thing you do when you're given a uh, an equation of a hyperbola is you find its uh, center and you plot it. So the center is at h comma k, and so that's usually pretty easy to read off of your equation. It's just h comma k, and we'll plot that point. All right, once the center is plotted, the next thing you're going to do is uh, basically figure out if this hyperbola opens left and right. In other words, it has a horizontal transverse axis, or does it open up and down and have a vertical transverse axis? You have to make a decision on, on which, which graph it is. We'll talk about how to do that in just a minute. Third thing you do is once you know um, where your transverse axis is, you can find and plot the vertices. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll do that next. And then you will next um, find the hyperbola's asymptotes. Now, we'll, we're, we're going to have to talk about this one a, a little bit more in depth. Um, see, basically, let's say you know that your hyperbola opens left and, and right. Well, one thing you still don't know is how narrow do you graph that piece that opens to the left and the right? Is it very wide or is it very narrow? And there's these things called asymptotes that will help us see exactly how narrow we're supposed to draw each piece. And then once we have these um, inf uh, this information one through four, then it's very little trouble to finish graphing the hyperbola. Okay, so let, let's talk about it for this particular example here. So here I've, I've gone ahead and done step one. If this is your equation, then the center is obviously at hk, which I've gone ahead and plotted here. Next, we need to decide, does this open left and right or up and down? Uh, for, for that, I had given a tip in an earlier video where I had said, let, for instance, your x equal h. Choose the x or the y to be its center value, x being h or, or y being k. Um, I, I'll just do this as, as if x was h. If x equals h, then you're, you're right here, and you're looking for the y value that will make the equation equal 1. But if x is h, this term is 0, and you notice what you have left is an impossible situation y minus k squared over b squared is definitely positive and then this minus makes it negative and you can't have a negative value equaling positive one you can't have it so if there's this empty space here if there's no y value when x is h then the only option you have is to have a hyperbola that opens to the left and to the right you can't have it opening up or down because then you would have y values when x is h but on the other hand, if y was equal to k and this term was 0, then you could easily choose x values to make this ratio equal 1. Namely, those would be your vertices, of course. So this particular hyperbola opens to the left or right, left and right, rather. Okay. And, uh, and, and more specifically, what we know from an earlier video is that the vertices lie to the left and to the right exactly a units. So you go a units in this direction, h plus a, and then a units in the other direction, let's just call it like right here, h minus a. All right, and then so now the only thing left is to decide, is this a very wide hyperbola, or is this a very narrow hyperbola, or is it somewhere kind of in the middle? Like how, how much bend does this guy uh, have in particular? Right, to answer that question, let's see, we found the center, we found the... Uh, had a horizontal transverse axis. We uh, found the vertices. Now it's time to find these asymptotes that I've been talking about. So what, what the heck is that? Well, what you're going to do to find these asymptotes, uh, well, let me back up actually. What, what these asymptotes are, are these, um, these kind of uh, slanted lines that, that your hyperbola is going to approach 
as it goes through the vertices. So depending on how wide or narrow these asymptotes are, then that's going to dictate how narrow your hyperbola will be. So now I, the obvious question is this, how do, we, how do we get those asymptotes? Well, he, here's what we're going to do. I already know based off of the vertex that um, this is A units away and this is A units away from the center. We're also going to go B units up and B units down from the center. And you notice this, this makes a very natural rectangle. You can very naturally draw a rectangle um, 2A units wide and 2B units tall. And now what we're going to do is connect the opposite corners of this box in a straight line. Okay, so through two of the corners it would look something like this. And through the opposite two corners it would look uh, something like this. Okay, those two guys are the asymptotes of your hyperbola, which mean as you graph your hyperbola going through your vertices, it's going to go through your vertex and then hug these asymptotes here. So you can tell depending on the width and height of the box, it'll give you either a very narrow hyperbola or a very wide hyperbola. And since these two um, vertices here were on, on these two sides of the, um, the asymptotes, it's going to open left or right uh, as opposed to opening up and down. So um, if you follow these steps here, then I think you'll be well on your way to graphing all of your hyperbolas.